What is self-love? Well, self-love is being able to love yourself, right? Seems simple enough, but you'd be surprised how often that non-self-love things come out in behaviors masked as self-love. So it's one of those things where it takes getting used to understanding what that actually means. What does self-love actually mean for it to benefit you in a positive way? Self-love is more than just taking a bubble bath, reading a good book, or eating a piece of chocolate, or snuggling up in a blanket, although that does fall under this category of self-love. But what does that, what's the core of that? What are you doing in that moment when you are self-soothing like that? Because those are all self-soothing acts, or acts of like grooming the self to to take care of the body, you know, like bathing, taking a bubble bath, you know, is not only soothing and relaxing to the body, but it is also cleansing us. So what is at the core of all of those things? What is at the core is being able to, for you to exist in this plane of existence, this plane of reality, the three-dimensional reality here on planet Earth, in a way that is sustainable that is promoting growth, that is promoting a healthy, vibrant life full of joy and love. And who doesn't want that for themselves? If you go around and you ask somebody, Do, would you be okay if you had more joy in your life? I guarantee you most people would say yes, unless they are sadistic or being sarcastic. So it's, it's one of those things where it's just innate within us to want to thrive. So we get this idea because we are social creatures as human beings, we have to, we are meant to be around each other in family units, friend units, and even a societal unit on different scales. So it's like we are meant to be together as a species. And so when we live our lives thinking about the other too much, then we lose a sense of ourselves. And the thing is, is then what is selfish? That is being too much invested with the self at the cost of the other. So if you think about it, self-love is the perfect balance between self and other. And the only way to have that balance is to understand what you need. That is what self-love is, is giving yourself what you need. And so here's the thing is there's a bit of a caveat here when it comes to children or things that are, are more vulnerable, you know, like people with uh, mental disabilities or, or certain other disabilities or children or the elderly. So self-love is one of those things that is very, it's an autonomous act. It's an act of of our free will. Um, but that's the thing is those that are in more of a vulnerable state need the help of others. Like child, for example, they, their whole purpose, well, there's more than just this purpose, but this is a big one. Their whole purpose is to learn how to love themselves. And the way that uh, humans, babies learn and human children learn is monkey see monkey do. That is one of the biggest ways that children learn is they watch, they observe, and they are absorbing all the time, whether they are aware of it or not. That's just kind of what they are. They're just absorbing knowledge and learning and observing the world around them just by proxy of being alive. So if they see their parents or their guardians taking care of themselves and their needs, then they can learn how to take care of their, their needs and themselves. And, and sometimes that means that the parent has to kind of do a little bit of self-sacrificing to make sure that child is loved and taken care of. And that's a whole nother ball game is parenting, but it does require that parent to learn how to love themselves fully because I'm here's, here it is. Here's the whole crux of why it's so important to love yourself first is because you cannot pour from an empty cup. You can, but it's not sustainable. That's the key. If you keep giving from a place of lack, 
then it's just going to entrench you in that lack feeling and it's actually going to end up poisoning the relationship because then a whole bunch of other things come in and that's not what this video is about but i'll touch on a few just like you know martyrdom or feeling the victim or um ex expect having expectations or you know what i mean like those things that kind of can poison a relationship happen because the person is is trying to be generous but from a place of lack they haven't learned to give to themselves yet or give to themselves first they're used to filling up their own cup by giving to other people but the only way that that ha works is if the other person reciprocates or responds the way that person wants and that can kind of turn into a manipulation game too so it can get perverted over time because it's unsustainable to be giving from an empty cup you have to fill your own cup up first and that is what self-love is so the next question would be how do you fill your own cup up what does that even mean well there's it's going to be different for everybody but there are certain things that are tried and true no matter what one of them from my personal experience is boundaries boundaries are extremely important for no for actually loving yourself because when you figure out what your boundary is okay and then you stick up for yourself that is what somebody who loves somebody does they stick up for them it's like if your friend was getting picked on or your kid was getting picked on would you just be like oh well you probably deserved it absolutely not we would stick up for them and be like hey what the heck's going on here and you need to calm down sir take it down by five notches or whatever so that's what i mean is like you learn to take care of yourself the way you wish the other people around you would take care of you if you're not in a very loving place you know it's like the the way we wish we would have been raised or the way we wish certain people were to us rather than hurting us we wish that they would have loved us we need to do that for ourselves to fill that cup up and if you've experienced abuse at all and I know that word can be very triggering for some people, but it's it's just part of reality for a lot of people. So it's something that needs to be addressed is if you've experienced abuse, your cup can feel like a deep, deep trench and it feels like it'll never get filled. And, and it's because of that abuse, because you, you're coming from a, an extreme place of lack. So it's even more important to learn to love yourself, especially if you've ever been through abuse, whether that's from others or self-inflicted or from um, addictions or what have you, whatever, or, you know, societal, you know, abuse or, or there's just so many different types of abuse. I don't even want to go there in this video. So it's like, think about it. How can you stick up for yourself more? How can you stick up for yourself better? And this is the thing where this, all of these things get connected because there are emotional indicators. When you're experiencing certain emotions, that'll trigger you into like anger or frustration or whatever. And at, that's when those negative emotions happen when our boundary has been crossed. Think about it, like our skin is a boundary. And when that skin, when that boundary gets crossed by a foreign object, it hurts. It feels like, ooh, sting. So when you feel like those ouch emotions, those ouchy emotions, they're telling you something. They're giving you information. So don't just be like, oh, I feel angry, but I don't know why and I don't wanna think about it, but I just wanna be happy or whatever. It's like, yeah, that's valid. However, take a look at why you feel the way you feel. Are you being taken advantage of? Are you letting your boundaries get crossed? Are you letting yourself get walked all over? Are you not speaking up for yourself? Do you need to invest in, in your own time? And are you too much of a perfectionist? Do you need to take a chill pill and just relax? Like. These are questions that only you can answer. I can help by bringing up certain examples, but I am not gonna sit here and list all of them because there's just so many. So here's, that's what I mean is self-love is so much more than people get a bit credit for. And it's one of those things that I don't think is talked about enough because, you know, it's just a word that is thrown around like, oh, love yourself or self-love or blah, blah, blah. And then there's some people who kind of get cringed from just even hearing that word because some people, and here's another thing, some people mask selfishness 
as self-love. And I think that is where a lot of the cringiness comes from when, when people, if you feel yourself, if you're in the group of people who feels themselves cringe when they hear the word self-love, think about why. Is it because you've seen examples of people being hypocrites when it comes to that? Or have you seen examples of, of um, people masking selfishness as self-love? Here's another thing too is, the people that, if you, okay, here, let me backtrack here for a second. If you recognize within yourself that you have a lack of boundaries because you feel that you're being taken advantage of or you feel angered often or there's those like triggered emotions that you need to take a look at, if you feel that you need more boundaries and you start putting those boundaries in place and sticking up for yourself and sticking up for those boundaries, who gets mad around you? Who gets upset when you tell them, no, you can't do this anymore? Who gets upset? Now, some people might get upset at first, but then they're like, okay, yeah, you know what? I see your point and they adjust because they love you. People who actually truly love you and belong in your life are the ones that are going to be like, you know what? I love you and I understand. And that's it. If you have somebody getting angry at you or trying to force you to go back to your old ways, those are people who have been taking advantage of the fact that you hadn't, you didn't have a proper boundary in place to begin with. So they're, they are not being able to leech off of you anymore. So be aware that once you really start loving yourself, that means you're going to be choosing yourself more often. And sometimes that means other people need to take a back seat. Now, you, there is a balance with this too, because if you take it too far, people will suffer, actually suffer, you know, because here's the thing is some people might be all like, oh, boo-hoo, you're hurting me so badly, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, you're not. You're just holding a boundary up and it's their problem that they're having a poor emotional reaction to it. If you feel firm and confident in your boundary and you say, yes, this is something I need, then that is important for you to listen to and to uphold for yourself. Because another part of self-love is actually trusting yourself. And so to trust yourself, to learn to trust yourself is by following through on those things that you set yourself, your mind to a goal, have boundaries like we just talked about, um, other things, you know, like you will or won't do these certain things. Like when you make a promise to yourself or to others following through with that. So in that case, if you find yourself kind of like being a little more on the wishy-washy side, be more careful when you make promises to yourself and other people. Try to be realistic more so that you're able to actually follow through with those goals. Another way to do it is make the goal smaller into tiny little bite-sized pieces. You know, it's like if you want to incorporate walking more in your day, just say, I'm going to walk to the end of the street and back, or I'm going to walk to the mailbox and back. And you start small because then once you do that, you start building that confidence. You build that, that, that uh, trust with yourself and the habit nonetheless, and then you can build off of that. But here's the thing, starting small is, is a huge act of self-love when it comes to following through with the things that you set your mind to and the things that you agree to, because that is a really awesome way to build that trust. And that trust is part of what it takes to love yourself is, do you trust yourself? Will you stick up for yourself? Are you a, are you a good friend to yourself or do you, do you talk shit to yourself? Do you talk, are you, do you have an inner voice that is mean to you? That is something to observe because that voice isn't you, but you're observing it and it's happening and it's there. But if you take every thought that's like that seriously, because that thought is probably there from like abuse or old programming or whatever, but it's like not helping you. It's actually, it's not an act of self love to berate yourself when you don't like reach a deadline on time or whatever. Like it, it's actually not nice. It actually tears you down more than builds you up because when it tears you down, it actually makes it harder for you to follow through next time. But if you're like, you know what, if think about what a friend would say, or, you know, what an actual good friend would say is like, you know what, it sucks that you missed that deadline. Hopefully you learned how to like manage your time better and, um, you know, try again next time, you know, that's all you can do really, honestly, it's all you can do. So why go through the self, the self 
inf don't inflict pain on yourself to try to get a job done. It's more sustainable because that all that does is take. It's more sustainable to do it out of love because that actually fills your cup up. It's like, that's what you wish you would have received as a child. So it's like the encouragement, the love, the support, like in abundance, you know? So it's your job now as an adult because there's you're, there's nobody watching out. They're, you're not a kid anymore, you're an adult. So you gotta do this on your own. And that's a kind of a hard pill to swallow. But once you realize that it's your responsibility and your job to love yourself a before anybody else, then you will be on the fast track to being able to fill your own cup up with love and joy and trust. And, and just, it just feels so good to be alive and in your own body. It dissipates depression. I know this from personal experience. It dissipates so many different negative things in your life that it's like, oh, wow, you feel lighter. It's like you've let let go of so much baggage that you didn't even know you were carrying, but it takes the work of actually doing the steps that it takes to love yourself, which we went through, you know, building trust with yourself, having boundaries and following through with that, those things, watching out for pitfalls and certain signs, especially with other people and like how it can kind of disrupt your life a little bit, but then it smooths out and it's much, much better. Trust me. So it's like, what is self-love? Self-love is choosing you to, in order to fill your cup up. Because the whole point, the whole point of filling your cup up is so that it will runneth over because you're gonna continuously fill that cup up and you'll have enough to share and for you to have enough too. So it's like the uh, just abundance starts pouring out of you when you have that self-love and you actually take care of yourself and you fill your own cup up. You're able to actually give more and from a healthy place for the people around you, which actually helps them. So it's just like all of a sudden this garden is just blossoming and growing, but it requires you to make that change, break away from those old habits and start loving yourself through the di making different choices and, and being nice to yourself mentally and physically so that you are able to fill those reserves up. It will help get rid of chronic fatigue. It will help get rid of um, being just kind of blah, blase all the time. It helps get rid of depression. I'm not a doctor, by the way. I am just sharing my personal experience. This is entertainment only. I am just here to share my personal experience of what I've gone through and what I've learned to figure out this stuff. So it's like, instead of going through years and years and years of pain and trauma and, and the painstaking, uh, uh, the painstaking task of, of, healing thyself <laughs> and doing my own and doing the homework and doing the research and, and trying it out trial and error and figuring it out. And this is what I've come to. This is what I've realized. And, and being able to connect with spirit is huge. A huge part of this being able to connect with yourself is huge. It is a huge part of it. Connecting with higher self, with God, whatever you believe in, whatever that higher power is, it exists and it's there and it's real. And it is through your heart that you are able to connect to that higher power. And so loving yourself is also opening a portal, a gateway to be able to reach something that fills your cup up spiritually as well. So you're able to just pour out love and abundance to the people around you if you learn to take care of yourself the way that you need to be taken care of, but you have to do it. You can't look for this in other people. You have to do it first. And then once you do it for yourself, then next thing you know, people around you will start coming at you with all this love and all this abundance. Trust me on that. So it's like, it takes faith. It takes trust. It takes knowing that loving yourself and making those tough choices, but they end up being more sustainable in the long run and better off for you anyways. It kind of, you kind of have to clear house sometimes and, and get rid of people and shift jobs or whatever, just to get out of the toxicity of these negative self -de self deprecating and self destructive behaviors in order to continuously fill your own cup the way that you really, really need to, and the way you really, really want to. 
you want to do this. The work is worth it because at the end, when you when you start finally feeling that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I feel alive again. I have vitality again. I feel excited again. I have joy again. It's because you've been choosing the things that actually fill your cup up with, with love. So thank you so much for being here and listening to me talk about this. This is a topic that I'm very, very passionate about and, and very adamant about sharing and showing what it actually looks like and what it means. So I hope that you can take this to heart and make some changes in your life. I love you so, so very much. I will see you next time. Okay. Bye.